does anyone still use the Novation Circuit Rhythm? That's a question that's been on my mind. That's a question that's probably on the minds of some of the more hardcore users of all things Novation Circuit. For the record, I still use mine. And I want to, first of all, just show you some beats I've been making with it. And then also talk you through like how it's fitting into my music production process these days. So I've got a few beats that I want to walk you through. And over the course of this, we'll get more kind of like existential about the fate of this weird niche little music gadget. All right, so let's start off with the beat that you heard in the intro. This little guitar flip beat. Let me show you what this started life as because it's rather different from where we ended up. I don't want to play any more of that because I could probably get got in some way for copyright infringement uh, if I played the whole thing. This is from Splice, so I can use it royalty free in stuff, but I probably can't just play the whole thing in its entirety. All that being said, I heard like something rather different in that sample. So here's how we got here. I have chopped it up using the slice feature. And more importantly, I have pitched it way down, not all the way down, but I've pitched it down to the point that it's gotten slowed down quite a bit. And the sample itself has degraded to where it's not a nice, cleanly recorded guitar anymore. It's kind of a dirty down sampled guitar. And I have also gone in and added some stereo width via this delay. And some reverb. And I've side chained it to my kick. Which this kick is quite distorted. And by the way, this kick is from my $5 sample pack. Link in the description. I added some new sounds to it a while ago. And these are in that pack. So very distorted trap kick. Very much flipped sample. And by the way, here's the first kind of thought about how I've been using this. There's a bit of a dilemma because on one hand, this is a very portable uh, sample chopping device. Other than the Dirty Wave Mate, it's the best very portable sample chopping device that I own. There's also the OP-1, but I might not have that for much longer. Regardless, one would think that you would spend a lot of time making a lot of lo-fi on this thing, a lot of boom bap style stuff and I just don't. And that's for the simple reason that the sample space on this is fairly limited. And yes, you could pitch stuff way up and then pitch it down later. In fact, that's sort of what I've done here. I've taken a normal sample and pitched it way down to make it slower and a very different feel. But loading a bunch of samples to chop into more kind of floaty lo-fi beats is just not really an option. So I usually end up making Vapor Trap. And also, Usually when I sit down just casually to make beats, I usually end up just making Vapor Trap. If I don't really know what to make, Vapor Trap is kind of the default. And that's what we've ended up with here. You're going to see that pop up a few times in this video. Hi-hat. Very simple. I should also mention I just loaded an extra clap onto this track because I just needed to dump it somewhere. So these hi-hat rolls are on their own dedicated track because I wanted to be able to automate the pitch. And to do that, I've literally held down record and just moved the pitch knob up and down until I got something that sounded right for those hi-hat rolls. And then in case you're not familiar, to do hi-hat rolls, uh, go into micro step. And you can see all these individual little mini notes are living on this one step. And I've got a couple of patterns chained together. This has a little bit of reverb. So if we go into effects, the subtle amount, 808, following what the sample trap does. I often like to cut just a little bit of lows with the high pass filter and add a little bit of distortion. We can take that pretty far. And with that, you haven't heard this element yet, so let me just play this together. This is a little saw bass. 
and I filtered it quite a bit. This is what it originally sounded like. Very clean sounding. So then we distort it a bunch and then tame it. And then we reverb and delay it. So let me get rid of them both. Just this little mono, kind of gritty little bass. Give it some floatiness. And remember, this is a, a slapback delay. So it's basically just like duplicating the signal and panning it left and right, nothing more. And then I have, on top of all this, added this little melody. And there's a second part, it's not good and you can't hear it. Um, but this is another case of like, basically the same processing where I've cut a bunch of lows, a bunch of highs, and then added distortion and then added reverb and delay. That's kind of my go-to for modifying synth one shots to get them to fit in a track and be both more floaty and a bit more lo-fi. Vapor Trap. <laughs> That's the name of the game here, as is the case with this. A lot of this is pretty similar in the way that it's set up. Distorted kick, very dry snare. All this is just on one track in this case. And another case of chopping a sample I got off a of splice. Once again, we've transformed this one, and by we, I mean you and me, the viewer. Uh, we've transformed this one quite a bit. So that's this one here. Let me just pop this open. So I've basically just gone and chopped out those little chord changes. Let me mute all this once again. And I've pitched it down a bit to make those chords ring out longer. And we've got some nice ping ponging delay and reverb to get some stereo width back. Very simple hi-hat with similarly uh, micro-stepped rolls. Little dedicated extra percussion track, which is not really doing much. Just an extra little cross stick and extra little snare. Fairly distorted 808. a very simple little trap beat. Very chill. So this, you'll never guess how this was made. <laughs> very similar. Ow. That's kind of uh, resonant because I have the resonance turned up, if you can even believe it. Once again, filtered. Distorted, reverbed, and delayed. My go-to, if that wasn't obvious by now. What else did I add here? Simple, little four on the floor, simple, and I didn't even end up doing anything at all in this track. And here's the thing. Like I mentioned earlier, this is very casual beat making. It's good enough that I actually want to show it to you and went out of my way to make a video to show it to you, but typically my use case for the circuit rhythm these days is it's been a long day at work. I just want to sit down on the couch and doodle out some kind of basic vapor trap or basic just generic concept of beat making. And so usually I've just dumped a bunch of sounds on this well in advance. And so I sit down, pop open a blank project and just start noodling. Maybe I chop a sample. Maybe I doodle out something from scratch. Sometimes it leads to a nice melody that I could harvest for something else. I've had that happen a couple of times. Sometimes it leads to a full track, but usually it leads to just a fairly static beat that's kind of nice to listen to in isolation, but nothing to write home about. That's my personal use case for the circuit rhythm because you know, it's monophonic, and so that does limit what you feel like you can do. That limits how full a track can sound, ultimately. Sometimes I can work around that and get something that sounds full enough to just be its own standalone track that you might never know was made on a monophonic device. Often, 
the tracks end up sounding just a little bit empty, which can be fine, but it's a limitation that we have to work with if we're going to be working with this thing. But what it is, is hands-on. That's what I liked about it when it dropped. That's what I still like about it now. And I genuinely mean this when I say, when I get home from a long day at work and just want to doodle out some beats casually, this is the first thing I reach for pretty much every time. And it's not for making content because Lord knows uh, circuit rhythm videos don't generate the views that even the circuit tracks does because it's a niche device. Some people were really disappointed by it and the people who liked it just kind of like went into our own little corner and just kind of tinkered with it idly and that's been about it. And I think that's fine. I'm still using it. I'm still enjoying it, but I do want to be quite like realistic about what this thing is. It's a Digitact for Zillennials, which means it's uh, fits for about three people, including me. Regardless, I've got some more beats. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit into something a little more energetic, but still kind of trap based. I've been listening to like a little bit of drift funk and wanted to make some stuff like it. So... A lot of this is fairly similar. Hey, do wait. And I've gone in intentionally. Oh God, I got to sneeze. <laughs> so this, hey, do wait, has been distorted a little bit, mostly to get extra volume, actually. And you'll notice I very intentionally cut off the beginning transient because you can hear there's a nice little attack there. I've gotten rid of that to make room for the kick. So just a short, distorted little kick together. That melds pretty nicely. I have taken the advice of our Lord and Savior, Kenneth Beats, and not sidechained my 808s. Dry little snare. It's the same snare. Very simple hi-hats. Four on the floor, open hat. Dedicated percussion track, as per usual with that same little crossed example, which is also in my $5 sample pack, by the way. Weird little like offbeat hi-hat thing with some rolls. And then finally, your main kind of melody thing. You'll never guess how this was made. Uh, it was made by distorting an element and then filtering it. <laughs> if I recall correctly, I originally sampled this from my Korg Electribe 2, the synth version. It actually sounds kind of dope as is, but it didn't feel impactful enough. So we've basically like artificially extended the sample. It's almost like feeding it through a guitar amp. And of course, it's uh, reverb and delayified. So let me just do this. And then, in this case, I actually didn't do any sidechain at all. In this case, I did a lot of sidechain. So, very much drift funk inspired. Fired. We've got this little vocal chop that once again I got off the splice. Get down in the car, get down in the car, get down in the get down. What does it mean in this context? I have no idea. I'm just this absolute chungus. This started life as an 808. And I've just distorted it to hell and back. And then side change it to the kick. There was a bug. I've also side-chained the vocal chop and the hi-hats a little bit. And then also distorted. This is the crossed example, or at least used to be. You can kind of hear it. Uh, and then pitched it around a bit. This is the other kind of thing I often find myself making on this, is just brash, obnoxious little bangers. Uh, also... Stuff like this. <laughs> Which 
which is fun. Um, something a little more on the punchier side rather than the, dis the distorted -er side. Punchy kick. Punchy snare. This absolute monstrous bass. I don't remember where I got this from. I believe it's an AU5 bass, but don't quote me on that. I've done very little uh, modification to it, but once again, I've done the little slapback delay trick to get some stereo width back out of it because of the mono samples. And then, of course, uh, side chained the absolute living snot out of it. Nice little drums. Nice little lo fi hi hat. This is kind of fun. Kind of a fun little element. I've also side chained this to the kick. A lead made by, uh, you'll never guess. That chord element actually sounds pretty weird in isolation and I probably shouldn't have used it. Once again, a fun little idea in isolation. I don't know how well it translates, but I actually do like how both clean and disgustingly dirty it sounds at the same time. So that's how I've been using the Novation Circuit Rhythm these days. Hopefully this gives you some ideas for how to use yours if you have one or shows you a real life use case if you're looking into getting one. Regardless, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see some more related videos, you can click or tap up over here. And I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching.